Hello everyone, so good morning and this time I'm back with another green top guideline summary. It's the epilepsy in pregnancy guideline, quite an important one for MRCOG uh, exams revision. Uh, I hope you'll find this useful and if you do then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave a comment um, below if you found this video useful and what was the most important part of the video that you uh, that you thought was useful and also if you, there's any suggestions about any of the guidelines or togs that you'd like me to summarize. Right, so uh, prevalence of epilepsy is between 0.5 to 1 percent. Risk of death is increased by tenfold. Um, 14 uh, maternal deaths were reported um, in the in this embrace UK of 2009 to 2012 and 2014 uh, report. 12 of the 14 deaths were SUDIP, which stands for sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. So. Women who are not considered high risk of unprovoked seizures can have low risk care in the pregnancy. Women who have remained seizure free for at least 10 years with the last five years being off any anti-epileptic anti drugs and those with a childhood epilepsy syndrome who have reached adulthood and, and are seizure free and treatment free can, are considered no longer to have epilepsy. So clinical presentation of various seizure types and their effects on the mother and the baby. So tonic clonic seizures, also known as grand null seizures. So dramatic events with stiffening, then bilateral jerking and a post seizure state of confusion and sleepiness. Effects on mother and baby, sudden loss of consciousness with an uncontrolled fall without prior warning associated with a variable uh, period of fetal hypoxia, this seizure type is associated with the highest risk of SUDIP. Absent seizures, generalized seizures that consist of brief blank spells associated with unresponsiveness, which are followed by rapid recovery. Effects mediated through brief loss of awareness, although physiological effects are modest. Worsening absent seizures, place of women at high risk of tonic-clonic seizures. Juvenile my myoclonic epilepsy, myoclonic jerks are the key feature of this form of epilepsy and often precede a tonic-clonic um, convulsion. These jerks present as sudden and unpredictable movements and represent a generalized seizure. Occurs more frequently after sleep deprivation and in the period soon after wake um, waking or when tired. The sudden jerks may lead to falls or to dropping of objects including the baby. Focal seizures, previously defined as complex partial if seizures impair consciousness and simple partial if consciousness is not impaired. Symptoms are variable depending on the regions and the networks of the brain affected with an individual. The attacks are recognizable and stereotypical Seizures may impair consciousness. Primary focal seizures can undergo secondary generalization and aura is a primary focal seizure. Impairment of consciousness increases risk of injuries such as long bone fractures, dental or head injury, um, electrocution or burns compared with, um, with if um, uh, consciousness is, is, is retained um, and epileptic aura only. They can be associated with a variable a period of hypoxia and risk of pseudop. The most common uh, major congenital malformation associated with anti-epileptic drugs are neural tube defects, congenital heart disorders, urinary tract and skeletal abnormalities and cleft palate. Sodium valproate is associated with neural tube defects, facial cleft and hypospadias, phenobarbital and Phenytoin is associated with cardiac malformations. Phenytoin and carbamazepine is associated with cleft palate in the fetus. Risk of recurrence for major congenital malformation is increased um, so at 16.8 per 100 in women with epilepsy 
who have a previous child with major congenital malformation. There's no significant evidence association between epilepsy type and tonic-clonic seizures in the first trimester and major level congenital malformation. Five milligrams a day of folic acid is, is advised prior to conception and to continue until the end of first trimester to reduce the incidence of major congenital malformation. Pre-pregnancy folic acid, five milligrams a day, may be helpful in reducing the risk of um, uh, anti-epileptic drug-related cognitive deficits. Lowest effective dose of anti-epileptic drugs should be used. Exposure to sodium valproate and anti-epileptic drug polytherapy should be minimized by changing the medication prior to conception. Polytherapy means that the patient's on multiple drugs um, for controlling epilepsy. Two-thirds will not have a seizure deterioration in pregnancy. Seizures in the year prior to conception require close monitoring throughout pregnancy. 67% do not exp experience a seizure in pregnancy. Seizure-free duration is most important factor in assessing the risk of seizure deterioration. Seizure-free for nine months to one year prior to pregnancy, 74 to 92% continue to be seizure-free in the pregnancy. It's quite reassuring facts to inform your patients um, who have uh, epilepsy. So antipartum management, regular planned antenatal care with epilepsy care team. Unexpectedly uh, pregnant women should discuss their therapy um, with an epilepsy specialist on an urgent basis. They're not recommended to stop or change their ep epileptic drugs abruptly without an informed discussion. Information, uh, the patient should be provided with information about UK epilepsy and pregnancy register and invited to register. Serial growth scans are recommended, especially to detect um, small for gestation age babies. Fetal anomaly scan at 18 to 20 per six weeks of gestation can pick up, um, can identify major cardiac defects in addition to neural tube defects. And this should be offered as per the National Health Service Fetal Anomaly Screening Program Standards. Biochemical screening with maternal serum alpha fetal protein when combined with ultrasound increases the detection rate of neural tube defects to 94 to 100%. Levels of lamotrigine uh, are known to fall by up to 70% in the pregnancy. In the antenatal period, regularly assess for risk factors for seizures such as sleep deprivation, stress, adherence to anti-epileptic anti drugs and seizure type and frequency. For antenatal admissions, risk of seizures and this risk of seizures in a, in a patient, um, then they should be um, in, 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 in an area where there can be continuous observation by a carer, partner or nursing staff. So they should not be left alone in a side room or, or in a room where um, nobody will be observing these, these patients. Now, this is obviously only for patients who are at high risk of seizures. During a seizure, Fetal heart rate changes like bradycardia and reduced variability have been noted. So therefore, if there is an intrapartum or a, a patient uh, has, it has an ongoing seizure, they should have monitoring of the fetus. So enzyme-inducing in uh, anti-epileptic drugs, co commonly like your carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, um, competitively inhibit the precursors of clotting factors and affect fetal microsomal enzymes that degrade vitamin K, thereby increasing the risk of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Enzyme, so patients who are on enzyme-inducing anti-epileptic drugs, like in the list above, um, they should, their babies should have one milligram IM vitamin K to prevent uh, hemorrhagic disease of the newborn uh, after birth. So reassure um, that most uh, women will have an uncomplicated labor and delivery. Risk of seizure in labor is low. Minimize risk factors like insomnia, stress, and dehydration. Long-acting benzodiazepine like clobazem, uh, if there's high risk of seizures, can be used in the peripartum period. Um, continuous, um, so patients on anti-epileptic drugs 
should continue these during labour. If they cannot be tolerated orally, then parenteral alternatives should be used. Tonic-clonic seizures occur in about 1-2% to of women uh, with epilepsy in labour and within 24 hours of de delivery in a further 1-2%. to Written guidelines on the management of seizures in labour every obstetric unit should have. Seizures in labour should be terminated as soon as possible because of risk of hypoxia to the mum and baby and fetal acidosis. Benzo benzodiazepines are the drugs of choice. Continuous fetal monitoring is recommended in women at high risk of seizure in labour and following an intrapartum seizure. Any seizure lasting for more than five minutes is unusual and represents a high risk of progressing to a convulsive status epilepticus, a life-threatening medical emergency which affects around 1% of pregnancies in um, women with epilepsy. Status epilepticus so can be managed with lorazepam IV at 0.1 milligrams per kilo, 4 milligram bolus given with further dose after 10 to 20 minutes. Diazepam 5 to 10 milligrams can also be administered slowly IV and as an alternative. If no IV access is available, then diazepam 10 to 20 milligrams rectally um, can be given, repeated once 15 minutes later if there is continue, continued risk of status epilepticus or midazolam 10 milligrams as buccal can also be administered. If seizures are not controlled, consider administration of phenytoin or phosphenytoin. Loading dose, uh, lo loading dose of phenytoin is 10 to 15 milligrams per, kilo, per kilogram by IV infusion with the usual dosage of an adult of about 1000 milligrams. Pain relief and labour should be prioritised in women with epilepsy. Um, options like your TENS machine, nitrous oxide um, and, re and regional analgesia like ep epidurals should be considered. Pethidin should be used in caution with women with epilepsy. Dimorphine should be used in preference to pethidin in labour. Risk of peripartum seizures. Um, if, there's, if, if a woman's got risk of peripartum seizures, they should deliver in a consultant-led unit with facilities for one-to-one, -one, midwifery care and maternal and neonatal resuscitation. Water, birth uh, and, and, and the use of water for analgesia and birth should be, um, the decision should be made on an individualised basis. Um, women who are not taking anti-epileptic drugs and who have been seizure-free for a significant period um, can have uh, water, um, can have water birth, but this is only after discussion with a epilepsy specialist. And as we said um, above, that this decision should be made on a individual basis after discussion with the epilepsy specialist. Overall chance of seizures during um, and immediately after delivery is low. However, it is relatively higher than during the pregnancy. Continue anti-epileptic drugs postnatally. Triggers of seizure deterioration like sleep deprivation, stress and pain should be minimized. If um, the anti-epileptic dose was increased during the pregnancy, it should be reviewed within 10 days of delivery to avoid postpartum toxicity. Screen for um, depressive disorder in the periparum. Units born um, should be monitored for adverse effects associated with anti-epileptic drug exposure in utero, encouraged to breastfeed, offer effective contraception to avoid unplanned pregnancies. Copper coil, the Mirena coil, the, um, the, the, the depot injections should all be promoted as reliable methods of contraception. Women taking enzyme-inducing anti-epileptic drugs like your carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, pyrimidone, oxcarbazepine, topiramate and eslicarbazepine should be cancelled by the risk of failure with some hormonal contraception. Women should be cancelled at the efficacy of oral contraceptives, um, transdermal patches, vaginal ring, progesterone-only implants, 
may be affected if they are taking enzyme inducing drugs. All methods of contraception offered to non um, enzyme inducing anti epileptic drugs. Um, so, so patients who are taking non enzyme uh, inducing anti epileptic drugs can have all methods of contraception. So, sodium, so like sodium valproate, uh, levetiracetam, uh, gabapentin, um, figabatrin, tiagabine, and pregabalin. So, copper um, intrauterine uh, device is what's recommended for emergency contraception. Um, patients should be informed that pills like your levonorgestrel and ulipristol um, that are also used for emergency conception can have their effect um, efficacy affected by enzyme-inducing drugs. Women taking lamotrigine uh, monotherapy and estrogen-containing contraceptives potential increase in seizures due to fall in the levels of lamotrigine. So this is an important table. So as you can see, that um, your copper coil, your Mirena coil is pretty much in the number ones and also your uh, depot injection um, for enzyme inducing anti-epileptics and non-enzyme inducing epileptics um, but then you can see the combined uh, hormonal pill the progesterone only pill the progesterone only implant because this can be affected by enzyme inducing uh, anti-epileptics it's, 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 it's considered to be in the category number three and two in, in certain areas. Quite an important table for your exams, and you must know this really, really well. So this one, two, and three sort of re represents your, um, your, you know, how, 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 what's the recommendation in terms of how safe this contraception um, is to be used. Well, that's it. Many thanks for watching. I hope this was useful, useful for you um, because it's quite a long guideline and I've, uh, and I've just summarised the most important salient points that you need to know for your exam. Um, I have also, and if you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave a comment um, below if you have watched um, this video and if you found it useful and if there's any recommendations that you may have in terms of any future guidelines or TOG articles that you'd like me to summarise for your any for your upcoming exams. Good luck revising.